you feel knowing that you're holding a million year old eyes? Uh, quite terrifying actually. Antarctica is a really key aspect of the global climate system because it is the only place that we will retrieve these long records of atmospheric conditions by drilling ice cores. And this particular core, a best guess, we're really hoping it's more than one and a half million years old. We look into the past to look at other time periods, other analogues for the climate and how it has changed before so that we can use that information to better predict the future. So the previous oldest ice core we have goes back 800,000 years, which is a staggering time scale. But the motivation really for this new record is to extend that and particularly over the last million years because this is a really important time period when we think we went through quite a significant climate transition that we still can't explain. This new ice core, this Beyond Epica oldest ice core, is a big European collaboration. The drill has successfully reached bedrock at 2.8 kilometres in January of this year. And just recently we have been taking shipment of these boxes here are the oldest ice sections and this is what we're going to analyse. So we're looking at the section of core that spans the period from 700,000 years to the unknown age. The drilling itself took place over four years and before that there are three years or so of surveying uh, to choose the exact location to pinpoint the best location for drilling. But in those four years we're just there in the summer time so we're there you know, three months or so trying to fit in as much drilling as we can per year uh, to get that done. In the end, we drilled down to 2,800 metres. So that was done across the four seasons. The first season, we had the setting up, drilling a pilot hole to just past 100 metres. The next year, we come back, carry on down to 800. The following year, down to 1,800. And then finally, last year, the team finished off going from 1,800 metres to 2,800 metres and getting that very oldest ice that we're so interested about. So the ice cores are particularly powerful in understanding how the atmosphere has changed. And this is what really makes us so different from the marine sediments, for example. So marine records, they're fantastic. They can go back a lot further in time, maybe five million years, in fact, but at a very, very low resolution. So perhaps one data point per thousand years. Whereas potentially within this particular ice core, we can actually extract enough information to look at the changes more on century to century timescales and understand the climate and the atmospheric changes all in one go. I'm a little bit nervous myself about holding it because it is so incredibly valuable. So many people have put their time and their careers and their effort into drilling this particular core. There are a lot of things that can go wrong when you're, when you're drilling an ice core, but drilling was remarkably smooth. The drill we used for this project, it's very fast. It can drill up to four and a half meters at a time, which doesn't sound like a lot when you're trying to get down to 2,800 meters, but it makes a big difference. We hang that drill on a wire and lower it into the hole. So we'll drill four and a half meters, raise the drill up to the surface, pull that ice out, start processing it, logging it, packing it away, ready to come back to Europe. Uh, and then we'll send the drill down again and we repeat that process over and over again. Now obviously the, the deeper you get in your drilling, the longer that process takes. So the season that I was there, we were drilling between 800 and 1,800 meters. Uh, it could take up to an hour just to lower the drill down to where we last got, another half hour to drill the next four and a half or so meters, and then an hour to come up again. So at least two and a half hours between sections. And so you can start to see how over 2,800 meters, it takes a long time uh, to get this work done. We're not analyzing the full core, that's a huge amount of information. What we're really focusing on is just the very oldest part. And this particular core is from the very bottom part of the, the, the record. And a best guess, we're really hoping it's more than one and a half million years old. So we're gonna overlap with the previous oldest core and then extend back in time. And we have 190 meters to go through. So this bag here, this is a meter long section. So we've got 190 of these that we need to melt and analyze. 
Yeah. So it is, it is a lot of pressure having the oldest ice on earth here. Um, yeah, it does keep me awake at night a little bit. The tricky thing with this type of analysis is that once it's melting, everything in the lab has to be ready to go and has to be calibrated and working and collecting good quality data. So the ice has to be kept really cold because if it's not, then uh, certain things in the ice can start to degrade. So to keep it in pristine condition, we have to keep it minus 20 or below but we always keep it minus 25. And actually, uh, a lot of the shipping uh, logistics from Antarctica are even colder than that, so maybe minus 40. And that really preserves the samples in a really good condition. We load the ice onto our melt head, which is a gold-plated piece of metal, which is heated. So the ice melts from below. In the center of that, there is a hole, which uh, we have uh, tubing. The tubing comes through to the lab. So it comes through the port from the freezer, into the lab it actually comes through this tubing here which you can see is starting to get wet all the uh, interesting bit of the ice comes through this uh, tube here that goes through this part which is the debubbler uh, so the debubbler separates the air that's trapped in the ice core from just obviously the liquid melt water it goes through these pumps and it goes to this part here a splitter and it splits off to eight or so uh, different instruments and then it feeds the entire lab It's a full, complete, continuous record from the present day to as old as the oldest ice in this sample is. And yeah, we know it's at least 1.2 million years old at the bottom. It could be 1.5, it could be older. We won't know until we've finished the analyses. It's having that continuous record of what the climate was like on Earth uh, and direct measurements. You know, people often talk about the atmospheric air that gets trapped in ice cores. That's a very direct measurement. But the number of proxy measurements you can make are huge. There's, the classics of looking at the isotopes of the elements in the water itself, in the water ice itself, um, they're an excellent proxy for what the temperatures were like in the areas around. You can look at uh, ash that's come from major volcanic eruptions, you know, the kind of eruptions that will cover the whole world in ash. You can see that in the ice. I've, I've, you know, I've drilled samples of ice and you can see this little yellow band where this ash is stuck there. You can look at biology in the ice, you know, stuff that's been microscopic um, phytoplankton that have been uh, blown in from the sea and end up on the land, uh, you can infer so many different things. So interestingly, there's evidence from other archives, from marine records, that suggests that prior to a million years ago, our transitions from glacials to interglacial, so these are from extremely cold conditions to the relatively warm conditions we're experiencing today, there's evidence to suggest that they were much shorter, so about every 40,000 years. Whereas what we've seen more recently in our record is that these glaciations are lasting much longer, 100,000 years. And this is allowing big ice sheets to form over the northern hemisphere. And there doesn't seem to be much of an explanation as to why that transition occurred, why a million years ago we weren't having these 100,000 year cycles. And it's very relevant for today because at the time the evidence is suggesting that a million years ago our ice sheets maybe weren't as big and that suggests that sea levels would have been higher. And there's also evidence that potentially the greenhouse gas concentration was also higher. So these are all analogues of how we think our future climate is headed. The way that the oceans and the atmosphere interact is we're all one big connected system. And Antarctica in terms of paleoclimate is so important. We want to understand what's going to happen in the future. And at the moment, our predictions are reliant on a very short observational period. What we do is we look into the past to look at other time periods, other analogues for the climate and how it has changed before so that we can use that information to better predict the future. Can we warm up now? <laughs>